Anytime during the show, type Spectrum, leave a space, type in your contribution and name, then send it to 7197. Your views, our interviews on Spectrum, Radio 1, FM 90. Just like an uncut diamond is brought to life by a matte skill and dedication, only our brewmaster holds the secret to crafting a crystal malt lager. Under the exacting international standards at Nalbury's, he uses only the finest, most carefully selected grains of roasted crystal malt and sets in motion the delicate process of releasing their full roast. The result is a world-class beer with a fresher aroma, a richer golden color, and a maltier taste. Nile Gold Crystal Malt Lager. Beyond an ordinary malt. Not for sale to persons under 18. Live the sun nighting. Good morning, sunshine of my life. You look happy today. I am. I came here and I saw there was a whole pile of washing to do. But I thought you didn't like doing the washing. No, I love it. Anything else you need washed? Sunlight to Ewa. With added fabric softener. Smells so good, you want to use it again and again. <laughs> Let the sunlight in Sunlight to in one Sunlight clean, sunlight fresh Let the sunlight in Happiness is all around Let the sunlight in Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90 Is brought to you by Stanley Bank A very warm welcome. This is Spectrum on Radio, and I'm your host, Edmond Chizito. On Spectrum tonight, the quest for transparency and good governance. How can we achieve these ideals, taking into account the politics and mismanagement of public funds? <coughs> Pardon me. The fight for transparency and good governance in Uganda remains a daunting task, <coughs> but one that does not require political leaders and the led to relent, given the fact that the future of the country is at stake. Key among the pillars of good governance is accountability, political maturity, and nationalism. It also calls for determination that supersedes individuals, political parties, nepotism, and regional politics. Recent developments in the country hinged on the fight against graft. However, uh, 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 they point to a bad trend with those implicating seeking protection from their political party tribe and political support at home. Whereas it's true that the fight against graft and bad governance can bring about political consequences for those involved, it is disturbing to note that institutions that are involved in the fight are under constant threat from those implicated. The ninth parliament has not been spared from this reality, and the latest is that the Speaker of Parliament is being fought by some members of the executive whom she named recently in a media interview. This threat is said to also have been meted out to individual members of parliament whose loyalty is currently being questioned. Other MPs have indicated that the threats are serious and that their lives could even be in danger. So tonight we ask, how can the fight against corruption be strengthened to avoid politics from derailing the process? Also, is it viable for political parties, tribes, or regional political supporters to protect those who have been implicated? Our guests tonight, Dr. Bed Wanika, President of the People's Development Party. You're most welcome, Dr. Wanika. Thank you. Good evening, listeners. Our second uh, guest is also Dr. Dr. Honorable Dr. Chris Bariomosi, Commissioner of Parliament and Member of Parliament, uh, MP for Chinchisi East. We expect him to join us shortly. Dr. Wanika, we're talking about the fight against corruption and the consequences to the ruling party. The party has come under constant pressure to make good its pledge in, the, in their own manifesto to implement a policy of zero tolerance against graft. Now, recently the cabinet and the Naram caucus prevailed over one of it, their own members, the stalwart actually in that party, Kawakumba Maskot, resigned from the office. Now, as someone from the opposition, are you now satisfied that the NRM is capable of tackling corruption after many accusations made against it, that it's a better of corruption. Yeah, I think the case in point is uh, the one of um, uh, Honorable Bukava Kumba. Yes. Uh, it's an indication in the right direction. Uh, whether it was out of pressure or, uh, of course, it was not out of uh, her own will, uh, it is an indication on, on all fronts that. Um, Uganda, we are beginning to reject corruption as one of our value systems. Uh, you know, corruption 
has been inculcated into our system, into our culture, not only among the politicians, but um, everywhere in the society. And uh, it had become a norm that, for instance, if you graduated from any university here, you worked for two years anywhere and you don't have a car, you don't have a, a big house, your village and family will begin to question <laughs> what happened. Uh, what ha because they are seeing, the demand is that uh, you must own a big car after two years in, in the field. You must own a, a big house. Uh, this has been our value system in the last uh, probably 20 years. When we begin to see a shift that uh, ministers can resign because of the uh, allegations and the investigations done by police, anyone would do. I mean, be very happy about that. It doesn't matter whether uh, it is the NLM. Uh, corruption in Uganda is not only the NLM. Uh, no. Uh, the big thing is that the NLM, they are the ones who are in power, and probably their standards are expected to be high. <laughs> they are expected to be high because they have been in power the last say, 26 years now. Uh, they, they should be the examples, yeah, but they have not set an example as far as fighting corruption is concerned. And we, you realize also that uh, this courage of resigning has not been a Ugandan culture. It's a new culture uh, in, in this country that uh, in Uganda <laughs> for a minister to resign, you see uh, we have been having problems with uh, uh, the Amama Mbabazi and um, Hira Lone. In other countries you know that uh, for them they said they expect a leader to you know, have high standards. It's not about whether uh, you, 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 you are a culprit or not, but the standards must be high, which is not in Uganda. Then again, when we see our leaders begin to move in that direction, then we begin to think that probably there is hope for this country. And then another question also which comes in is the ownership <laughs> of this country. In Uganda, unlike in other countries of the world which are uh, developed, uh, politicians, we think we own Uganda, <laughs> and more so when you are in power. Uh, you think uh, every other Ugandan is a sojourner in this country. You, who is a politician, who has got uh, the authority, the mandate of the people, you, are, you own this country and you know if you own Uganda then you can do anything you want. That's what <laughs> politicians have been doing in this country. Uh, they can run away with any money. Uh, an example is the, uh, the, the one which struck us, the one of uh, the bicycles. Uh, that someone can go with four point something billion, not even buy a, a kengere. <laughs> <laughs> what a few bicycles, one percent was Yes, bad. not even tires. You, you, you could come in with tires and you say that uh, the real bicycles are underway. <laughs> yes. but, but, you know, uh, people can do things with impunity because uh, they, they think they own uh, this country, they own the resources, and anyone else is not supposed to, to question. And then you, you, you come in and then you begin to question what are the rights of the citizens in this country? What are uh, their rights? Uh, can we question uh, those who are in power? And uh, where do we stop? You realize that uh, the citizens of this country, apart from being given an opportunity to go in for the polls, beyond that they don't have any right. <laughs> they totally don't have. Uh, the, the, those who are in power uh, think that uh, uh, you have handed over <laughs> to them the authority, the resources, and it's upon them to administer, use whatever they, 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 they it is in their, I mean, it is in their possession, the, the way they want. And that's what has been happening uh, the last uh, 26 years. I'm talking about 26 because January, then I It's very close, yes. less than a month away. Yes. Well, just about a month away. We probably can talk about the first 10 because they were, they were very good examples that uh, the NLM wanted to fight corruption that time. But uh, in the last 15, things have been so, so bad. So when we see 
uh, the ministers. Uh, I think what we, the ones whom we want to be so grateful is the Parliament of Uganda, the Ninth Parliament. Uh, or the right Honorable Kadaga on the forefront. Uh, I think she has done a good job. Yes. I attended the, I was in the, in the gallery when they were talking of debating the oil saga. And uh, uh, of course I was very fascinated by uh, the way she was handling Parliament. Uh, it was a huge debate with lots of stakes, uh, you know, but uh, very balanced. Uh, it's unusual, you know, <laughs> in Uganda yes. that uh, you can go in Parliament, you are uh, elected a speaker with a majority, you know, uh, political party in right. the government. Yes. And then you decided to take a, a middle, a very balanced position. Right. Probably that's why Honorable uh, Bokadaga now is finding uh, problems because some members of uh, her party they're not used to this new paradigm. <laughs> they're yes. not, they're not used. Accountability. Yes, they're not used to the accountability issues. They're not really used to be called to transparency. Uh, they have been doing the things the old way. Uh, now when this speaker, because you know, I even up to the grassroots. Uh, people have not been, uh, you know, taking accountability and transparency very seriously uh, because uh, of the, the, this threat that we, we can recall you. We, we gave you our votes. <laughs> you know, now the, the, the NLM party, uh, they wanted to use the gun that uh, we are the people that put you into that position. Yes. <laughs> so they, they, they wanted to blackmail her that way. Right. Uh, but the fact that she has stood firm. Uh, she said, look here, uh, I appreciate that uh, it's my party that uh, nominated me, definitely elected me into the position. But we have a duty we owe to this country. Uh, now when she stands very balanced, of course we'll hear so many backfire uh, in her face yes. uh, because this is something new. And then when we analyze the, the parliament, uh, all of us when they are just sworn in, we try to do to be very critical on them and uh, we realize that uh, the majority of them uh, they are the people who own this generation and now that one also the ownership question comes in right. uh, the majority of the members of parliament uh, they are 45 years they are a good number 45 years and below yes okay. average age I think 43 yeah, 43 yes. so they fall in the bracket of the people of Uganda who say look here you the others you have done your part give us space right. <laughs> we want to own our generation yes uh, that's why sometimes they go against even party positions right yeah, they, they they think that they must be given space and they don't want to associate with the history of no accountability the history of corruption right uh, they, they they are trying to make sure that uh, they put up a new legacy right uh, that's why uh, probably in this ninth parliament we are going to see a lot of corrosion uh, between party positions and uh, the, the, the individual uh, members of parliament. Right. And uh, also it's a sign that uh, probably uh, multi-party politics is mature in this country. Coming of age. Yes. Because everywhere in the world where multi-party is useful, uh, each member of parliament, individual member of parliament, is free to take a position in the interest of the country, uh, sometimes in the interest of their constituents, uh, not necessarily in the interest of the political party. Right. Yeah, in Uganda, we had built multi party politics, uh, claiming that uh, a party position <laughs> is uh, the priority position. Yes. And we are seeing now members of parliament uh, shifting. Uh, they are saying, look here, uh, we cannot stand <laughs> uh, corruption uh, simply because the party uh, position is uh, for uh, that uh, honorable whatever uh, so they are beginning to come out very clearly and they are also reading clearly that um, the, the public uh, I mean is coming out so serious on the issues of corruption uh, and you know we have been crying the public has been crying corruption corruption uh, without anyone is here yes yeah, and uh, all of you must remember that in 2011 elections yes corruption was a key was a key issue yes uh, 
It never dictated how people voted for presidents. Yes. But it turned out a key issue on the uh, on the table on the issues which the population was bringing out that have become a, a problem in the face of the NLM party. So any member of parliament that uh, would want uh, to perform, yes, uh, this is a <laughs> an area that you must go for. Right. Yes, because and uh, the members of parliament also are realizing that. Uh, uh, basing on the 2011 elections, yes, that you can go against the party position as long as you are for the people. You have a principle, yes, pro people principle. People will bring you back uh, to parliament, yes, uh, which is unlike, for instance, in 20, uh, 26, uh, 2006, yes, uh, 2006, the the party. Uh, positions were very strong. The party were, uh, the NLU party was very strong, and that if you never agreed by their party position, yes. many of them lost. Right. But in 2011, you realize that um, people took a stand, even in the primaries. Uh, there are quite a number of people who the the party, you know, when I talk about the party, I mean the whoever leads the, the leads the, 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 these parties, uh, they were in for some candidates. Uh, including, I think the president sometime went around and campaigned for these guys. Yes. And uh, people rejected them. So this one energized the the, the, the MPs that... Uh, that people have come away. Exactly. They can choose. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. You, you don't need to uh, go in with every party position f in fear that uh, the, the party will not sponsor you, the party will not, <laughs> will, not, will not take you to parliament. You can still come as an independent. You can still go into those people. They, they know what they want. Right. Uh, so I think also that has energized the debate and the fight against corruption Right, and uh, for me, uh, what I can predict that is going to intensify. You think it's going to intensify? Yes, Kabakumba is a small fish. Yes, in terms of, uh, of course, based on what we see in the newspapers, she has had a lot of serious mistakes. But the investigations are for police, uh, serious ones. What I'm reading from the newspaper. Right, but I know that uh, there is still a big, a big catch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you think we shall get some sharks and uh, yes, crocodiles yes, yes. like uh, to me, she's a small one. Right. <laughs> if we give space to these MPs and uh, we avail them with whatever, uh, I think there are still uh, some good ones that uh, will be of interest to the public. Dr. Betty Wanika, President of the People's Development Party, uh, is uh, one of our guests tonight, uh, giving us that analysis, that perspective from his side. We've just been joined by our second guest, Honorable Dr. Chris Bariomos, Commissioner of Parliament, also MP for Chinchiza. It's your most welcome, Honorable Barry Omosi. Thank you very much, and uh, good evening, listeners. I'm sorry I'm late because uh, of the seven jam is just unmanageable. They call it them seven jam, some people. I began, rightly or wrongly. I began with a vehicle, then the jam for the border border, then there was the traffic jam for border border, then I walked on foot. <laughs> well, <laughs> to here from Paraguay. <laughs> Talk to us then, Honorable, about corruption. We've had, well, the uh, princess from Bujanje was thrown out. Minister for the Presidency, influential member, flamboyant, if you like, of the party, was thrown or not? Have we seen the beginning of the end of corruption, official corruption? Yes, from uh, the point of view of Parliament, we are extremely committed to fighting corruption uh, because we, on the NRM side, when we campaigned, when you look at our manifesto, one of the chapters within our manifesto is the fight against corruption. And we did promise Ugandans that NRM will promote the policy of zero tolerance corruption. And therefore, as parliament, we have a cardinal function of the oversight over the executive. And one of the areas we look at is the corruption, because we promised people as political leaders that we are going to focus on service delivery. So we cannot allow to have these national resources leak through corrupt tendencies. And that's why you have seen the parliament come out very strongly, and the, we shall continue the fight. So 
the resort of by parliament to fight corruption really has started and the, it it's unstoppable. It's unstoppable. In Kenya they used to say they are unbookable. So you think it's a movement, it's Absolutely. a torrent, it's Absolutely. a flood. And therefore our appeal really is to call upon everybody, including our colleagues, the political party leaders like my friend the Honorable Dr. Gandika, civil society and the rest of Uganda to support parliament in this fight against corruption. And for us, we are saying irrespective of who you are, if a finger is pointed at you, we shall deal with you. And that's why when we met as the NRM caucus, we advised our sister, Ola Lemakamakumba, that her options had run out. She had to resign. She had to take political responsibility to allow for investigations to be complete. And we do hope that the full process of the law will take its course because resignation is not enough. The, the law must take its course, and if she's found guilty, then she's punished accordingly. If she's cleared, well and good. And uh, like I found Dr. Ghanika saying, there are many others who are coming. The list is long. Really? Yes. Both the political leaders, but also the civil servants. Uh, I think Ugandans must unite, irrespective of our political party differences, irrespective of our differences, to fight this vice called corruption, if we are going to improve the quality of life in this country. And you are convinced even the big fish will get fried? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, listen as this is Spectrum on Radio 1. We're yes. going for a break. Our topic tonight, the quest for transparency and good governance. How can we achieve these ideals? Taking into account the policies and mismanagement of public funds. Our guest tonight, Dr. Bert Buanika, President of the People's Development Party and Honorable Chris Bariomusi, Commissioner of Parliament and Chinchizi is MP. Well, let's move forward. We heard from the Speaker of Parliament who some people think has been in the middle of basically fighting against corruption, fighting for the right, being attacked. She says she's being attacked by people close to the Prime Minister because she's fighting corruption. Well, uh, you see there is a, a very big departure from the eighth Parliament to the current Parliament. Yes. Uh, the constitution is very clear that the parliament should act as an independent institution. Uh, we are happy with our speaker, Roy Tonole Rebecca Kadaga, because she is steering the parliament properly, in my view, uh, by separating the roles of parliament from those of the executive. I think, unfortunately, that the, the ninth parliament has been hard on issues of corruption and has touched some senior members of government. And maybe they think she should have protected them the way it was happening in the East Parliament. Uh, say, I think some people think she shouldn't have allowed, for instance, the oil debate to take place. But I think she's doing her work as a speaker. We petition the Parliament, we petition her office that Parliament should be recorded from recess so that we debate the oil issues, the oil sector. I mean, she also had no option because there was a command by the Constitution that once we sign, she has called Parliament. And I think she handled the Parliament quite fairly and uh, impartially and told the government to prepare their side and be able to respond to issues being raised by members of parliament. So uh, those who are really criticizing her, those who are fighting her, I think they are fighting a losing war. I think it's a losing battle. It's a losing battle, yes. <coughs> Dr. Buanik, let's look at these political consequences. Again, on the speaker, she has indicated in a media interview at the weekend that she's being fought by Amama Mbaba as the prime minister, held by people like Daudi Magirako, who's also a minister, and Asman Chienji. Now, some MPs are also saying that their lives are in danger. Don't you think this will threaten some people? They get cold feet they, so they can do They go and do other things. Uh, I think as uh, Honorable has said, mm. uh, there are things in this country that unite us. Mm. <laughs> and the fight against corruption is one of them. Uh, there is a public goodwill. Uh, you know, Honorable, the Speaker must not fear mm. and whoever is involved. If you are involved in a task that does not have uh, the public goodwill, mm -hmm. you will be worried. Yes. But everywhere in this country, people are suffering, drugs are not in hospitals, uh, we are in a city that is full of potholes and everywhere the roads are not there. And there is money that uh, should have done that work. So the fact that uh, there is that backing of the public, uh, that is going to be a cushion for whoever is involved. Uh, whether the speaker, whether an MP, that will be the cushion. And uh, I think we don't have to be worried whether the prime minister is fighting uh, the speaker. Because that's at the very high yes. level. Uh, let them do their work. 
I told you from when I attended the parliament, I saw a very balanced, <laughs> very balanced speaker. Yeah, absolutely. And she gave uh, opportunity for the prime minister to, to respond. To respond. And she says the prime minister doesn't know th these things of parliament in courts. Yes, because she said that uh, he didn't uh, take a lot of time attending the parliament in the previous mm. uh, parliamentary uh, sessions. I think he must learn and be, uh, if he doesn't know, uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a leading government business in yes. parliament. Yes. I, I think she made that comment in light of the the issue of the business of parliament. Yes, that's was, true. Because uh, I think uh, the prime minister was asking the speaker to convene the business committee of parliament. But the business committee usually sits to prioritize the business of the house. And the speaker was saying, no, you have not brought bills to parliament. You have only brought the state of the national address by the president and the budget and the related bills which come with the budget. But apart from the public order management bill, there is no other bill which has come from government. And actually, the last six or so months, we have been discussing private members' business. Like even this oil debate was generated by the private, by the back bench members. So uh, the uh, front bench is uh, the 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 say You don't know how parliament functions. You should bring the bills. Then I send them to committees. When the committees have reports, then we shall sit as a business committee to prioritize how we discuss those bills. Otherwise, we can't just sit to take tea when you have no business you have brought from government. Uh, that's, the, I think, the, the context in which he said the Prime Minister seems not to be understanding how Parliament functions. Of course, you've explained it very, very well. It's now it's very clear, substantively, that uh, there's not been substance brought to the fore. Bills are coming from the back bench. Let's talk about the political winch, which and some people, many of those who have been implicated have cried out, saying that they're being fought by their political adversaries. Minister Hillary Renek uh, went to the point of saying uh, that the oil debate in parliament was uh, linked to a plot to oust the prime minister and possibly lead to the collapse of the government. The president himself said anyone who targets Mbabazi is targeting him, the old man. I think those arguments are nonsensical in my view. Uh, because when an issue comes and fingers are pointing at an individual, then it's just saying they are being fought, these are personal wars. Really? Uh, it doesn't make sense. Hillary Rodney himself on the floor said he was going to resign immediately the committee's name it, and after now he's still acting. People should be honest and people should be sincere. So I don't really buy uh, that issue of saying people are being fought, Amamba is being fought, Hillary Rodney is being fought, Kabakumba even, he, I also had it being raised when we caucus the people are fighting her and with, I remember among those who said why don't you name the people who are fighting her? Because we are told the police recovered equipment from her radio. So is it police fighting Maybe her? Maybe someone planted So it. people just want to get the uh, scapegoat. People want to get a way of explaining off uh, something. Uh, but I think I will even advise the president to desist from that line of argument. If fingers are appointed to an individual, whether the prime minister, whether the vice president, whether who, whoever you are in the government, then we should leave the investigative institutions to handle the person and then clear him or her or find him guilty. But the president doesn't have to me the competence and the capacity to say you are innocent or not. Oh. Oh, <coughs> parliament and this investigation have been done. So really if we are going to fight corruption yes. in this country, right. then let us allow the institutions, the IGG, the CID, the parliamentary committees on the park, the auditor general, we should allow them to do their work, yeah, not right. really to have this political interference. So uh, the argument that they are being fought through political wars I think it's diversionary. And you got a student listen to that. Dr. Uh, Wanika, of course, uh, Dr. Professor Mukenya is another man who said he was being uh, hounded politically. Well, he's now free. I, I, I think, uh, you know, what the NLM is suffering in, uh, from, uh, you know, they have been operating using power centers. Go on. Uh, you know, people are built around a power center. Yes. And now, in this fight of corruption, they are being dismantled. <laughs> the power uh, centers yes. of the NLM are being dismantled. Uh, yeah, they are being dismantled. Go on. Uh, we either belong to Mbawa's group or we belong to, to a Kutesa group. Uh, now, uh, when the other one do you know about? <laughs> Baba Kutesa. Of course, I, I saw them in the news. I saw Onalebo Kata group. I saw Kutesa. <laughs> <laughs> they are quite, quite a number. Yes. Uh, yes. So, if you are, uh, you, you are in problems, 
you definitely run to the power center where you belong. Right. Yeah, and the reason, the only way you can receive, receive protection is to claim that uh, these guys are fighting, and when they are fighting you, they are also fighting Babas, they are also fighting another one. They are fighting that power center. Like yes. Small group. Of yes, but uh, I think at the end of uh, uh, the day, these power centers are going to be dismantled because some of them also are built on corruption. Power center? Yes. Within yeah. the party, you think yes, built on corruption? Yes, some of them are built on corruption. Go and and uh, they are now being attacked from left and right. And also, in addition, there are these problems of succession. Uh, also, it has become a debate. Yes. <laughs> it has become a debate because some power centers have been built on who will succeed who. Uh, and, and now, when they are attacked, uh, of course, there are problems. But uh, I don't think, as the Honorable said, that one should refrain us from uh, taking on the real problem, the real evil of corruption. Right. Uh, yeah, the, uh, corruption has, uh, you know, destroyed this country. We should be bold. We should be committed. It doesn't matter where you belong. We have belonged to President Museveni's uh, house deep inside because they are the most uh, important person uh, in this country. Uh, Political is the yes, president. Yes, he's he's the, of politics. yes, he's a fountain of honor in this country. Yes. But uh, whether whatever we are running for is in his house <laughs> or in someone or in one mm -hmm. we should go for that. And for us, we have argued that the, the people being implicated in the corruption scandals should be seen as individuals. So this thing is not even an NRM <laughs> problem about individuals. So, because if you steal money, if you abuse your office, you are doing it as an individual. Yes. And that's why I don't even... Um, uh, I don't even think the, my friends in the opposition are also keen when the campaign was being run down in the way I told about, you, about the traffic jam, the potholes yes. the leadership was not necessarily the NRM it was the opposition True. so that's why even the NRM we have argued that if fingers are pointed at an individual let that person explain himself for herself he shouldn't, he shouldn't hide under the umbrella of the party that we are NRM, we sit as a family saying no, if it is Kabaku or Mama Bawazo or here on deck, then he or she should explain himself as an individual. As an individual, mm -hmm. and not to hide uh, behind a party or behind any uh, any kind of group. How about these power centers? Well, well how, shall we see the end of them or what? Uh, uh, well, some of those are imaginary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at times uh, heightened by you, the media, uh, but to me, uh, they don't uh, exist. Uh, no, they are there, but I uh, just ignore them. Like the issue of succession. Yes. Uh, really, nobody will impose on us any person. What do you mean by that? Uh, you have a leader, 25 years, he has experience, he should be able to know the right person. So he should choose for you. Uh, no, it's not his responsibility to tell us who should succeed him. <laughs> well, he has he the has. world. He's been there 25 years. He would know. You know, it is us to choose the person to succeed him. Why? And I can assure you, yeah, it is through our vote. You yeah, didn't choose him to lead you, did you? Well, but I will be choosing him subsequently. Go on. Subsequently. And uh, therefore, first of all, within NRIM, people will emerge. They are very many capable people. You think so? Yes, yes. People yes. capable of coming up with a vision? Just watch this space. People will emerge, and I'm sure we shall vote <laughs> the right person. And then that person will compete with those candidates from other opposition parties. So, it's not the duty of President Museveni to say, I want so and so to replace me. He's not a kingdom. Pour oil, oil on his head. It's not a monarch. <laughs> well, in <laughs> 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 peaceful transformation, peaceful pass handover yes. from one leader to another. Well, listen, as this is Spectrum on Radio 1, tonight, the quest for transparency and good governance, how can we achieve these ideals, yeah. taking into account the politics and mismanagement of public funds? Our guests tonight, Dr. Abed Buanika, President of the People's Development Party, and Honorable Dr. Chris Bariomonsi, Commissioner of Parliament, and Tim Chizi is the MP. You'll be able to call in later and contribute to this discussion. Let's talk about nepotism mm -hmm. and corruption in the same bowl mixed together. When Kabakumba was about to resign under pressure, some people came with signatures to talk to the president saying, this is a good girl back home, don't let her go. <laughs> do you think we're likely to see you know, this going on or do you think it's a diluted cup? Uh, uh, well, of course, they say a drowning person will kill him on anything. Even when it's a snake. But I worked for other people. Kain Dutafiri did it. He was fired. Then he said, I can cause trouble. Went to state house with a group of people. He was reinstated. Yeah, I know. It has been a culture in Uganda. Even those who have been charged of corruption, you see their tribesmen and tribesmen coming to court and chanting slogans of our money. Oh, yes. But I think that should not distract us from 
really fighting corruption because the crime is a crime whether you are popular in your home area or, or you are supported because all of us are in the parliament we are elected leaders we have support but that is need if I commit a crime then I should be pardoned because I have support in my constituency or in my, in my area <laughs> so those will happen but I think the due process of the law should always take uh, uh, course. Uh, I think also it brings in the question whether uh, wherever you are coming from uh, yes. corruption is part of the value system mm. Mm. Uh, because these are going to be v very very big issues uh, for instance if I'm corrupt and uh, my people from Masaka mm. uh, come in and uh, this uh, this uh, yes uh, the entire country is going to question you know uh, Masaka is a corruption part of our value system I think we must agree that um, corruption is an evil wherever you are coming from yes I think what uh, Honorable Kabakumba was doing is because the appointments in this country political appointments they are definitely based on sometimes where you come from which is understood so she was trying to play the same cards <laughs> the, the, the same cards and like but Dr. Williams said uh, it was clutching under the straws yes uh, I, I think uh, we must be careful as we move towards that uh, side of uh, you're saying it's outdated it's not going to work in the future yeah. Mm -hmm. This is Petram. You can call in now. Our number zero four one four three four eight one 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 zero three one two two six zero three nine zero zero three one two two six one three nine zero. When you call in, please tell us your name and where you're calling from. You can also send us your text messages. What you do is type the word Spectrum, leave a space, question, message, or comment. Send it to seven one nine seven. That is Spectrum, message, question, or comment. Send it to seven one nine seven. You can also call in. Hello. Yes, Spectrum. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Your name. Hello. 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 We can hear you loud and clear. Yes, this is Miss Elia Johnny from Seta Mukono. Yes. Thank you for having hosted those members in the uh, in the studio. Uh, I would like to comment on the Parliament's issue about fighting corruption. It has been identified that the Parliament always strives to say that it fights corruption, and then you find that he, what he, it has tried to, to, to cut out come, comes into a fiasco when it reaches to the, to the third arm of the, of the government, which is the judiciary. Now, why is in the parliament seat and at least an active role can at least, whereby somebody, if the parliament carries out investigations and the IGG finds that somebody has been engaged in corruption, they don't go to courts of law because it's where some of the issues come into a fiasco and then with the, the parliament fails to realize what it has been fighting for. Thank you very much. Spectrum, hello. Hello. Hello, sir, your name, madam? Hello. Yes, your name? Hello. Hello. You're loud and clear on Spectrum. Hello. Hello. Yeah, this is Makoha from Nakawa. Makoha from Nakawa, yes. Hello. Yes, sir, please go on with your question or comment. Hello. Yes, sir, we can hear you loud and clear. Yeah, to me, the way I see the government doing it is things. I think the problem is by our leader, the leader of the NRM party. I think corruption should also have, it is the minister to represent those who are corrupt in the parliament. Because he is ever defending them. Thank you. Spectrum, hello? Hello? Hello, good morning. Yes, sir, your name? Good evening, good morning. Good evening to you, your name? Hello. Hello. We can hear your name. This is Wamboga. Yes, Peter Wamboga. Let me, I want to say that he, it's very important the subject matter you're handling is eating the social and economic fabric of the country. Embezzlement, corruption, and sectarianism are very, very serious evils, but they must be clearly identified and classified so. For instance, we are regarding stealing, utter stealing of public funds and grabbing of land and other things as corruption. This is theft. It's public theft or theft of public resources and it must be clearly called so, so that people understand the magnitude of the matter we are dealing with. When we talk about uh, uh, sectarianism, 
we must clear it, say so and dress it in a clear language and manner so that the people can know how bad the issues we are discussing are. But if we group them as corruption, it's, it, to some people it looks like oiling something which is rotten. It should be called theft, embezzlement, you know, abuse of office, stealing, so that we, we classify this very clearly and very specific terms, so that the public does not get lost in this issue of corruption. Sometimes we regard corruption as being uh, graft or sometimes being a bribery. And uh, those levels of, of, of those kinds of, 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 of evils. But the biggest problem is embezzlement and misappropriation of public funds. And, and also misallocation and abuse of office and influence peddling. These are the very, very critical matters that are really driving our country crazy. All right, thank you, Peter. Spectrum, hello. Hello. Hello, your name? Hello. Hello, can you hear your name? All right, uh, I'm Rashid. Uh, good evening, Edimo. Good evening, Rashid. Uh, much as uh, we recognize the resignation of the minister, however, if we may really go into detail and see that kind of arrogance, uh, right? Uh, much as, you know, she resigned, but that resistance in the beginning, then later on, uh, could and she be reinstated and this one is a mere you know sugar coating to alleviate the kind of you know pressure of the public uh, those in the studio could really help us you know to analyze you know further thank you hello okay let's get to hear from our dear guests honorable dr Buanica. Uh, I think the first caller, uh, it was John from SETA. Yes. He, he's talking about the, the strength of the law and uh, then the judiciary. But I think, to me, the problem uh, in the fight of corruption, I don't think there are the laws. I think we have good laws and enough. The problem is commitment to fight corruption in whatever sect of government, whatever arm of government. It has not been there. Uh, that's why uh, some of us are so grateful now to the Ninth Parliament uh, that they are committed. The cases have been there ev ever since, but we had lacked that commitment. What we need, uh, we need commitment in the judiciary, uh, the personnel, uh, so that uh, all of us, uh, whatever cases are investigated by police, by parliament, uh, they are dealt with uh, accordingly. And then uh, uh, Mr. Peter Wamboga, I think he's talking about the terminology. <laughs> the terminology. Yes, how you dress this? Uh, it is always not clear, you know, uh, in the years of public, the terminology is not clear when we talk about, even when there are issues of theft, uh, you actually, I don't know whether in this case, like uh, of Kabakumba, <laughs> I mean, she, she actually, they lifted. <laughs> <laughs> this was lifting the, the, the equipment of uh, a corporation <laughs> and then taking them. I think that should be, uh, I would agree with him that that is, that is theft. Uh, yeah, this is how we should say theft instead of saying corruption. corruption. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I, think I think he has a point. Yes, he, he's, right, he's right there. Uh, probably that's why the, the public was not taking some few things seriously. What they say, you are corrupt. And then they think probably you took a bribe, <laughs> you, you didn't actually steal. Uh, and then uh, Rashid is raising a very huge <laughs> question. Yes. Uh, what about if uh, Kawakumba systems go on as usual and she's reinstated? Uh, where will we be in the fight? <laughs> I think it's a million dollar question. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope, <laughs> we only hope uh, that it's not going to happen. But the way, I don't think so in the parliament that is committed this time. From the statements I'm hearing from police, they are doing their work a thorough investigation. If police has done their investigation, mm. then we will know where the problem is. We will know that for instance the judiciary uh, has uh, absconded as far as fighting corruption is concerned. At least uh, we are not going to lose the entire battle. 
I think the, 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 the fight has started uh, somewhere. I think uh, there, there, is, there, there will be some few things that we have achieved. Do you think if they bring her back, the committee that sits will say, sorry, no, find somebody else? Uh, I think there are, there are a lot of political questions now. No, I think it will depend on how <laughs> her case is concluded. Yeah. Because her, she might be innocent. Maybe she's yeah, still her resignation doesn't mean that she is guilty. Yes. We hope that the police will conclude the investigations and then uh, the file is prepared by DPP and maybe the prosecution takes takes place and then at the end of the day she should be cleared or confirmed guilty by the courts of law. If she's found innocent and hasn't been interfered in the whole case, well and good if she bounces back. But the problem comes when there's maybe political interference yeah. in the case. Uh, in the case. Like uh, you have seen the case of the former vice president, Gilbert yes. of Kenya. Was there interference? No, no, he says he was taken there because he was being a political fault. Mm -hmm. Now IGG comes out and says, I have all the evidence, I have the witnesses. He reaches the court, most of the witnesses disappear, they are not coming, they are not forthcoming. So you see a process which is not very straight. So we would want commitment from all institutions of government, like John is saying, the judiciary. I think one of the weak areas is the investigation part of it. And as a parliament, we are looking at how we can strengthen the police, the investigation, so that if allegations are made on an individual, then the investigation is a thorough. Evidence can be adduced for proper prosecution. But definitely the judicial also has to be strengthened to ensure that they can dispose of these cases in a record time. Otherwise, some of these cases take long. Take an example of the Jim Wesey, uh, Mike Mukura. Which is still going. Fund. Since 2003, 2004, up to now, uh, the cases are not concluded. Uh, really, we also want expeditious handling of these cases so that justice can be seen to be to be done on some of these corruption cases. Mr. Makoa is saying we should get a minister for corruption. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> I think he's just saying that the political will, even at the top level, is lacking. But uh, we shall mobilize everybody, including the president, to really continue holding that commitment. Like uh, when we took a decision on the caucus that the Honorable Kamakuba should step down. He didn't interfere with the, with the yeah. decision. Yeah. So yeah. it's also not true that he's not committed. Mm. He is. He is committed. And uh, we need to make this a huge movement as Ugandans to, uh, to push whoever is named in these corruption scandals. All right. Yeah. <coughs> we have some, uh, some messages that came in via text. Someone says, Bertram, uh, this is Moses in Entebbe. All MPs are corrupt, dodging, dodging sittings and signing for allowances. Now they are forcefully planning cars. That's Moses from Entebbe. Uh, Chris, uh, no, this is Alex from Bugoro. He says that, uh, I think Dr. Chris, good work. Do not relent and support the speaker strongly. Is it time? It is, it is time to sort out the worms from the mushroom. That's Alex in Bugoro. Dr. Wanika, are the parliamentarians corrupt? They, do they dodge uh, sittings and sign for allowances even when they don't sit? You know, at one time, I was one of the people who were against uh, the car project for the MP. Yeah. But after being happy with the work they are doing, you could, they should take the I case. don't think that. That is 37 billion is not too much. That is million shillings for yes, each car. I, I think they are a small amount. Really. Yes, they, they deserve the, the, the cars. They are doing a, a good job right. for this country. I'm not worried about that. And we should not be diverted by these the small things of MPs signing for allowances. Let's tackle uh, the big, the big yes. The big we, we, will come, we will come to this. Uh, the small details. Yes, but uh, you know when we go in for these, uh, mm -hmm. uh, they are diversionary. If I think uh, uh, we should go in for uh, the Some major stories are planted in the media to divert the attention <laughs> the of the public effect. because <laughs> Parliament has been now in the forefront. Yes. They would want stories which discredit Parliament. Yes, so that we probably get sort of side track, side, side, uh, side absolutely. track. Absolutely. Do you think we can keep this momentum going, or do you think the MPs will get soft eventually? No, I, I think, like I said in the beginning, this wave within the United States Parliament is unstoppable, and I'm saying this as a part of the leadership of Parliament that uh, we shall continue striving for the independence of Parliament, 
so that we can carry out this oversight function over uh, the executive. And therefore, the pledge we can make to Uganda is that the nine this parliament will even become a farmer and a farmer on these issues of corruption. Con Dr. Wanika? Yes. Do you think the move is unstoppable? Or do you have to me, uh, they have started off so well. And I think... Uh, you also pass, you might be able to see things some of us might not be able to see. Uh, no, they are, they, are, they, are in good, uh, they are in good shape. And I think uh, they, will, they will be able to shape the executive. I think that's where the problem has been. And we should not live in history. As he has said, uh, when they went to the president, he, he said, uh, uh, let Kawakumba go. <laughs> Let's start. I mean, whatever happened, there are many things that have happened in this country. In this fight of corruption, let's uh, look forward. Let's support the parliament. Let's support uh, whoever is involved in the fight. Uh, it's a fight for the entire yeah, country. We actually need support from the media, from the citizens, from civil society. Because you have seen in some districts where the president is going, yeah. some people are organized, stage managed, tell the president that the <laughs> members of parliament in the who are speaking out. Exactly. Yeah, but we are stage managing yeah. events, so uh, we need the support from all Ugandans on this issue of corruption so that well, we can move forward. Thank you very much, Dr. Hopko. Thank you very much, Dr. Diego. Honorable Dr. Ben Wanika, President of the People's Development Party. Thank you for coming to Spectrum, Doctor. Thank you. Honorable Dr. Chris Bariomosi, Commissioner of Parliament and Chinchizi East MP. Thank you for coming to Spectrum. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you, the listeners, for yes. the program. True. Thank you for tuning in. I've been your host, Edmond Chizito. Spectrum will be back tomorrow. Up next is the news in English. Do stay tuned to Radio 1. John, Mike and I, we go back a bit.